Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a man that I recently met who's an absolute inspiration. His name is Rome Za. His actual real name is Roman Zarayensky. I, I know I pronounced it wrong, but Rome, what's up, brother? How are you, man? All good, bro. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to have you here. So let me give you guys a little bit of his bio. Well, first, let me just say that I met Rome uh, about a month ago now, bro. That's how fast time is flying. Isn't that unbelievable? Crazy. Uh, in a uh, mastermind in Utah um, that Mike Geary... And I Raleigh through, um, and we just really hit it off. He's guy's amazing. You guys are going to find out about that, him and his story and his mission on this podcast, but, uh, he's a true Buddha. I mean, I really look at this dude as like, holy shit, like the wisdom that he exudes. And by the way, he's only 35, but he's an ancient soul. Uh, you guys are going to see this on this podcast. So bro, it's an honor, man. I'm very, very grateful to have you here today, man. Very much so. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yep. So his, uh, his bio is, uh, his work is in connecting the physical, mental, and emotional aspects of your life into a positive framework to provide healing and stability. He is also a martial arts expert, which I'm going to let him talk about here today. Uh, but just an all around amazing human being and definitely uh, part of the children of the light. So bro, let me just ask you before we jump into the points, because that's what I'm doing nowadays is like, and by the way, today for everybody, it's Thursday, October 20th, uh, 2022. Um, Dude, we are in an amazing time, you know, obviously we resonated with our beliefs and our thought patterns. You know, you turned me on to ENT, uh, you know, the personality profile, if that's what you want to call it. And, you know, now I'm like, you basing my whole life around it, but you know, where, where do you see humanity going? I mean, obviously we talked up there in the mastermind about two separate, you know, timelines or realities where people like us, you know, just call us people in residence, you know, still still protective of our human sovereignty and then maybe the metaverse people who are just going to check in you know and never check out but like how do you see it playing out in just let's say the next three to five to ten years good great question uh i see a lot of uh people uh living in a space of isolation for a while like the people like there's going to be like obviously we're going to go in different directions like there's going to be people that are terrified of isolation and they're going to continue to live in these cancerous societies that literally look like cancer. Like if you zoom yeah. out and you look at uh, a major city like New York, L.A., um, you, it, it looks like what a cancer would look like with all of the cells kind of like on top of each other and creating like a growth. And um, and people that have those cancer growths like i mean it, the cancer needs to be fed so it's constantly like bringing in more cells to uh feed that space so i think there's going to be people like living in those places that are completely enslaved and outside of like their own consciousness like they don't have a consciousness anymore because they live in like a state of fear um on the other end of it i think that there a lot of people are going to have to uh, before they come into community, cause you don't want to bring your own shit into community. So you're going to have to spend some time in isolation, especially as men. Um, I believe men are going to have to spend some time living an austere life in austerity, like all the warrior cultures did, um, yeah. as a rite of passage. Yeah. Um, they're going to have to spend time alone, really doing their internal work, getting clear on where, where they're wounded, where they're, where they haven't healed. And then from there attract their tribe, right? Like your vibe attracts your tribe. So your frequency is going to constantly bring people into your life that you're going to be able to co-create with, to create synergy with. And that's essentially like what we've been longing for, for so long. Like we've stepped away from the idea of tribe because we wanted to be 
all inclusive with everybody. It was just like, nah, fuck that. Like, it, it's all good. Like, you can have like your own pot over there, and you can have your own pot over there, and like we can intermingle like the tribes did. But like, this is my tribe. This is your tribe. Like, all good. Um, because like with the idea of inclusion, we've lost our individuality as humans. Yeah. And I think that we need to get it back because like we're we're losing our art forms because of politically correctness, like from from comedy to to painting, like right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're losing our ability to sustain ourselves as humans. So we have to get back to that. Like we have to really fall into this new space of balance and, and that takes work. So I think that's, I think that's where society is going. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. um, where people really, um, tap into their freedom, their wellness, their sustainability their sense of ownership and responsibility for all the shit that they've created in their lives. Cause like I work with a lot of people, right. And then I get like, Hey Rome, like this is really hard. Yeah. Motherfucker. It's hard. Like you shit your bed for 40 plus years and you expect what? Like, like you can't just buy a new bed. No, right. you're stuck with this bed for the rest of your life. You right. have to clean it up. Otherwise yeah. you're going to be uh, sleeping in shit and piss your whole life. Clean it up. It might take a few years. That's okay. There's no fucking shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, to everything you just said, a lot to unpack there and we got to get into this podcast, but like, bro. Yeah. I mean, I, so I look at it right now is like, and, and again, you said something to be profound. I'll save it for later in the podcast, but people have gotten to a place and this is all due to call them the dark side, the parasitic energy, whatever you want to call it, just call it the opposite of, of divinity you know, have given people the easy button, bro. And everybody today wants to do the absolute fucking minimum to get the maximum. Nobody wants to work hard. Nobody wants to read a book. Nobody wants to actually go through a course. Nobody wants to actually mentor under a master. Like everybody wants the shortcut, the ninja tactic, the secret hack, it's so fucking insane. And, and as a result, look around. <coughs> Obesity, inflammation, people who are now brain dead from you know what, you know, sick. You know, people talk about, I have long haul this. It's like long haul that. No, you are a anxious, riddled, fat, inflamed, hormonally deficient bile of pus. You don't have any of these things that they diagnose you with so that they can subscribe, you know, prescribe drugs to. So yeah, dude, that's it. Like, and you know, back to the meta analysis of this or the meta angle is like, dude, we come here as souls to evolve and grow. And what is going to evolve and grow your soul more than difficulty or contrast or work? That's the whole point of the mission. It's to work. Like the more you struggle now, obviously, resistance is different than struggle, right? But the more you struggle, the more your soul gains. 100%. It's that simple. It, and people have lost this. And, you know, you were talking off the air about tribal communities, right? And then you think of, like, the indigenous, you know, even in the U.S. today, and most of them have been destroyed and bastardized and given drugs and alcohol. But, you know, you go into Australia and you see the aboriginals, you know, you go into the South American rainforest and there's still indigenous down there. Those people live as God intended. They live a, amidst a rite of passage. The men and the women, they have roles, they have jobs, you know, they have uh, how would I say it? Uh, you know, affiliations in their tribe that they have to do. And all of this is, you know, instrumental. It's almost supplemental throughout their life to get to where they become, you know, hopefully a sage, you know, again, wisdom teacher, whatever you want to call it. And in this society, bro, with all of this, you know, again, technology and easy buttons and apps for that, you know, instant gratification, people have no purpose. They have no mission. They have no clue. You know this. If you asked a hundred men on the street right now, what is your mission? Would you even get one? Maybe one. Maybe. Maybe, maybe one. <laughs> maybe. Right. right. To, 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 to like summarize, it's funny that you, like there's something that you said that resonated. was just like, yeah, we're going to go into two different directions. We're going to be either desolate and completely like isolated from God or consulate, right? Where we, we connect with God. 
the God inside of us, not yes. the God inside of some fat fucking bishop that's telling you what to do. And Give me your you money. The Put the money in the hat. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. I, 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 I can talk to God myself. You are God when you connect with the divine aspect of God, Jesus, Yeshua, whoever that avatar being was. There's a million names for him, Ahura Mazda. You know, uh, there's so many different names and so many different cultures. But he told you if it was a he, right? I mean, he literally said the kingdom of God is within you. You don't need to understand anything else beyond that. But again, you're right, man. The dark side has puppeted. Bro, I look at all these. And again, I don't want to pick on Christians, but you know, you and I are Christian. Like the reality is they're so brainwashed. They literally think that, you know, this being is coming on a golden chalice to rescue them. They won't do any work because... My Christ, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior is going to save me. I mean, they have baptized and inculcated the minds of billions of people. And I'm not just picking on Christians because, again, I know we are. I mean, I was raised Catholic. But at the end of the day, all religions are the same bullshit, bro. For sure. For sure. Religions are made to, in Russian, they say that uh, religion is opium for the masses. Exactly. That's right. Call it hopium. For it's sure. more. It's more than opium. It's literally hopium because the opium, like they're already brain dead on opium from their fucking pills that they prescribe, right? Yeah. And now it's just like, well, you know what? I don't have to worry because in the afterlife I'm going to be saved as long as I put that hundred dollars in that basket every Sunday, bro. <laughs> Fuck, that's rough. All right, man. So let's, let's jump into this. Um, so you do a lot of work with men. I mean, you, you, dude, I kind of would like for you to summarize like who you are and what you do. And I know you have no ego, so it's going to be hard for you. But uh, the first talking point that we have is that the things that high performers neglect that are costing them their families, bank accounts and health. But maybe just come kind of a summary of like, you know, who you are in the Rome's uh, third dimensional ego state, you know, because I know you're a soul and I'm a soul. But, you know, we have these invented names. So maybe just give yeah. people a little background. Yeah. Um, I started coaching when I was like 18 years old. I really started coaching earlier cause I, I got into, um, fitness and weightlifting and all that stuff really early. My dad's uh, master of sports at Greco Roman wrestling from my country. Um, and I grew up super sick. So like I, when I was born, I was exposed to, um, chemicals from an oil refinery. So when I was born, they said that I was supposed to die because I had a nervous system dysfunction. Wow. Um, then I got a staph infection on my third day being alive. Um, then we immigrated to the U.S. because there was a war started. So we had to hire like a KGB agent to bring us to the train because people were already getting shot and killed outside. Um, so I, I just grew up sick. And then when I came to the U.S., like I had mercury fillings and I had allergy shots and I had all the fucking vaccinations. And oh. I've taken hundreds of doses of antibiotics uh, orally and um infused um so i was super sick for a really long time um and then but I, I was still training like i started muay thai and kickboxing really early and then i started weightlifting with my dad when i was nine and then by the time i was like 14 i was already like becoming physically developed and i was reading a lot so i was starting to get clear on like how to train um so I would help other people, right? And then when I was 18, I started getting paid for it. And then um, and then I had my dark nights of the soul. You know, I when I was 22, the doctors, because I was competing a lot in jiu-jitsu, and the doctors told me that they have to fuse my neck because I, I was having sleeping problems for about three months. I couldn't sleep because my neck hurt so much. They told me I had um, four herniated discs. I tore both of my rotators, my hip, wow. my right knee, my right ankle. I mean, just accumulated, um, over years of just practice and, and lack of balance in my body. Like I didn't, I thought I knew how to train, but I had no fucking clue. And then, um, and then I got super depressed. I started getting anxiety because what I found was that, um, jujitsu was the only thing that, that was keeping me tapped into like my wild nature as a human. And I was in school for like pre-med and nursing at the time. And, um, I fucking hated it. So when I was 22, I, um, they, they gave me a diagnosis. So I started teaching jiu-jitsu. I was like, if I can't train, they told me I'll never be able to compete or train again. 
I was like, I'm going to teach. And then my program started blowing up because of all the people that I used to like fight with when I was a kid in Brooklyn. Um, people like, were like, Oh shit, Roman, Roman has a program. Like I'm going to, I'm going to go check out what he's got to offer. You know, I want to, I want my kids to learn how to fight like he did when he was yeah. a kid, you know? Yeah. So, um, I, I just dropped out of college two classes before graduating and I started teaching and figuring out like my healing journey. I, I started to, um, I knew I needed to make money to invest in all these teachers and gurus and coaches. So like, that's kind of like where my entrepreneurship journey as an adult started. Sure. Um, I just, I started uh, flying all over the place, hiring people, just like trying to figure out these little things. Like I didn't want to get my neck fused at 22. I don't want to be a fucking cripple. Right. So I figured I healed all of my injuries by myself with no, well, with teachers, but like myself without fucking medical intervention, no surgeries, um, no cortisone shots, no nothing like just straight up, like natural, um, natural ways of healing. And, um, and that dark night of the soul helped to create like a new career for me. Um, in, well, at first it was supplements, right? I started selling supplements because I couldn't find supplements that were clean. So I started making uh, really clean supplements with no additives, no magnesium stearates, no citrates, no fucking rice, none of that bullshit that people are fucking putting in. And, um, and I blew that up and moved to Costa Rica. And um, yeah, I mean, what I help people do is heal. Heal because like I've had to heal so much shit um, internally, externally, psychologically, emotionally, physically, spiritually, that I don't know. I just don't flinch when I hear their problems. Like it, it, like nothing really like shocks me or surprises me. And I know there's always a solution and it's always an easier solution than people think. And my dad has this line. He's like, uh, the cheap person always pays double. Because when we start to look for what you were saying, like all those hacks and stuff, what happens is we wind up paying double or triple right. at least because we we don't want to take the long way home. Like you're going to be on this. I, and I tell people, people are like, how long is it going to take me to heal? It's like, how old are you? And they're like, because I used to be like, fuck off. That's what exactly. I used to tell Like, fuck, I don't know. I don't know what your fucking level of commitment or obsession is. Right. This is all I do. So, you know, um, I don't know what the fuck you're going to do. So, but now it's like, now I'm like starting to learn how to interact better with humans. So I tell them, I, cause they want numbers, right? Like they want numbers. I'm like, all right, you're 45, take four and a half years to heal. And they're like four and a half years. That's so long. And I was like, all right, what's, what's the other end of that? Like you don't do it and you're 50 and you're double worse than you are. That's right. Because what people right. don't understand is that if their parents are fucked up at 60, they're going to be fucked up at 40 at, that's right. at best. Because That's of all right. the toxins that we have now, at least a million times more toxins. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, bro, you're, you're, you're preaching to the choir. I mean, I mean, I mean, again, you know this better than me. I mean, like, you know, I hear guys now, and again, I know we're both blessed, you know, to, to be where we are and, and to be able to work with some of the amazing people that we work with. But it's like, you know, I have guys that will sell their company, you know, for 50 million or whatever it is. And then, you know, they're literally one foot in the grave, fat inflamed, you know, again, a metabolic emergency and they, you know, will pay me whatever it is, send in a, you know, questionnaire. And then I literally will jump on a call with them for five minutes and I will literally say, Hey, look, we're not a candidate. Uh, because they asked me for a 90 day plan. Yeah. And I look at them in their face and I say, bro, how old are you? I mean, I know how old they are anyway, but because it's on their questionnaire, but I ask them and they're like, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how long do you think it took you to become a disgusting fat dumpster file that you are now? And yes. then they kind of look at you like, did you just say that to me? Like, I just sold my company for 50 million. Like I am going to send your money back to you and I am not going to work with you because you don't live in the same reality that I live in. I can't help you brother. <laughs> and usually dude, at that point in time, they're literally in shock. Oh uh, yeah. You know, and usually you know how this is because, like, when you do that to those type of people, they're like, "I want to work with this person even more." Now they really want to work with you because you just told them to fuck off, and nobody <laughs> tells them to fuck off because, like you said, and I wanted to say this, like you said in a text message to me about a week ago, you said, "Yeah, the world that we live in is you buy my bullshit, I'll buy your bullshit. Fine, we come to an agreement. It's completely canceled out." 
And yeah. that's the world we live in. <laughs> nah. There are a lot of people like me and you, bro, who tell people to their face, fuck you. Yeah. I don't There's give no a fuck fucking way I'm playing money. that game. I don't care about your money. I don't care about your fucking title. <laughs> I don't care how many fucking Ferraris you own or how many G6s you fly on. Get the fuck out of here. But there sure. aren't a lot of people like that, bro. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, but that, but that's, that's my fucking unique, like value proposition, right? People are like, oh, what's your USP, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like that, like, I don't give a fuck. Um, and on the other end of that, like, I care so much about you that I'm going to fucking tell you the truth because I live my life in integrity right. and I'm going to be the only person in your life that's going to tell you this thing because nobody else is going to tell you they're right. intimidated by you. They're, right. they're, they're, they're so bought into your story yes. of how rich and how popular and how great you are. It's just like, you could, you could do better. It's what I put in our group yesterday, bro. <laughs> I got 10 K followers on IG, baby. I fucking made it. And you were like, God, dude, now you're going to have fucking Paris Hilton or whatever. The same Kim uh, Kardashian, bro. Kim Kardashian. Have to it's all the same. It's all the same. <laughs> But yeah, and, and it's true. But I mean, you know, I want to I want to go deeper on this because it's true, bro. I mean, we could do a ten podcasts on this. I mean, what has social media done to the mind of the average person? And and look, you know, I love women just like you do. But like, let's be honest. You know, all you have to do is watch that movie if you don't want to read anything. Uh, this what was it called? This the social program or whatever on Netflix about how Facebook rewired the minds of women. They literally tell you in the video that it was designed to fragment the nuclear family. And what has happened to women is they are now in this like parallel scroll reality where they're reading people's social feeds and they're commenting on baby pictures and they're doing all this stuff that literally is meaningless, but they're pulled and sucked in. And it's bro, it's, it, it really is incredibly awe inspiring to look at what these people, I mean, again, I always say, don't hate the player, hate the game. Like what they have created here is just unbelievable. And so many people now do give a shit about what other people say about them on the internet. It is the most insane thing. People will message me, bro, in the day. And they'll be like, did you see what so-and-so said about you? And I'm like, I don't even know who so-and-so is. Yeah. Why do you care what somebody says about me? But that's what social media has done. It's taken people's uh, mind, if you want to call it, off of what matters and put it on to completely immaterial, ridiculous, ludicrous things. And now this is where our society is. And you're right, dude. People literally are pussies. They literally care what somebody says about them on the internet more than what their kids who they're probably neglecting, you know, or their wife or their husband or whatever, you know, because they're more focused on what imaginary things are being said about on the internet. A hundred percent. Like if you have a problem with me, call me, like stop at my house. Tell me, you know what I'm saying? If you can't call me, you can't stop at my house. You don't know who the fuck I am. You don't have a problem with me. And like, realistically, like, and I, I think that goes back to a lot of that tribal shit too, because like, we've always been programmed to gossip, right? That kind of like kept yes. people alive in some ways, yes. but at this level, it's insane because what they right. used was they used our biological programming yes. and they blew it up on steroids yeah. yes. and people don't know how to handle it. Like no. a fear of criticism was no. huge in the tribal setting because right. like, if you, if you do something outside of the realm of the law, the natural law. Like you're going to be kicked out of the tribe and you can possibly die. So they're using yeah. that. Uh, and, and honestly, like, fuck, fair, fair play, bro. Like you guys created like this incredible fucking system that lowers men's testosterone, right? Because if you think of blue light, right? Yeah. All of it. Fucking sleep, stress, all of, it. Um, all of these things. Now you have lower testosterone. Now you're creating this incredible cycle of just like, effeminate living. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. I mean, bro, 
I mean, it, it, it's, 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 I mean, man, I don't even know where to go with that because from that, because yeah, I mean, look at the end of the day, you know, I think it was a guy, what's his name? The, the author is Mark Manson, you know, not giving a fuck is a superpower. I mean, yeah. he wrote that book like seven years ago, I want to say, and he had no idea how profoundly important that yeah. statement would become now because you're right, bro. Like literally people live their life by how many likes they get on Instagram for a post. Yeah. I mean, all you have to do is go on these social media. And by the way, I know you and I don't, but I mean, for business and stuff, we do have to answer questions because people will message yeah, us. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I, play, I play the game a little bit. Yeah, you have to. I mean, let's face it. I I, I don't want to be that guy that, you know, talks shit about it and then says he doesn't use it. I mean, I clearly use it for my business. I mean, I have an uh, Indian social media team that posts all my content, you know, very, very uh, disclosed, uh, not, uh, you know, transparent, authentic about that. And then I now have a video team that's editing all my old stuff. All they do is just clip shit and they post it too. So i got to go there once every couple of days, but you're right. It's holographic. And in answering people's questions, and by the way, I can't even do it now. You know, I mean, it, they're, they're so effective. Are they, you know, generating real income for me? I don't know. Hopefully I'll know by the end of the year, but like they're, they're generating uh, engagement. Like I don't, I have so many people. And again, I only have 10,000 people who follow me on Instagram. Who gives a fuck? But I have so many people messaging me that I can't respond and I can't reply, you know, in an effective fashion, because as you know, they're asking the same questions that a thousand other people have asked in probably the last month. It's always the same question, because as you know, it's a feedback loop. It's the same fucking shit. It's an echo chamber. But the thing is, is like, what is the purpose? Nobody wants to, again, as we already said at the beginning of the show, they don't want to read. They don't want to read your book. They don't want to take your course. They want you as their guru to give them the answer personally. And it's just impossible. And this is not excuses. This is literally the truth now, like where we are. And I just feel so bad because there's a part of me, you know, again, my heart that like, I really do want to reach out to these people and I want to help them. But all I can say now is like, Hey man, like I've answered this question a thousand times, but the bottom line, bro, is like for people like us at this point, we have to now completely compartmentalize and annex our time. And I know time doesn't exist outside of this dimension, but in this bullshit dimension, we got to exist in time. But we cannot afford to go on social media and hopelessly wander because it takes us out of creation, which, you, as you know, is divine, right? Creating is divine. Consuming is them. They want 100%. you consuming. 100%. 100%. That's all they want, dude, is us consuming. That's what they want. You got it. You got it, bro. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> well, you beat me. I don't know. I don't know who beat me. Did you say it first or I said it first? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> All right. So what are the first steps to tr true freedom, brother? Um, first, first and foremost is dialing in your nervous system. First and foremost. So I'm going to give you the analogy that I like to like describe it with. You're on a ship, you're floating in the ocean and you can't figure out at why you're in the same place you were last year. And that's what most people's dilemma is, right? right? Like 2021, maybe they have more money now in 2022, but they're kind of like in the same place. They're having the yeah. same conversations. Just maybe they're using different words because they read a new book, <laughs> but like same fucking paradigm, just different content, same context though. And then I, fly, I pass by on my fucking speedboat on my fucking power yacht. And I'm like, Hey, you know, you don't have a fucking sail and no engine. That's why you're not moving. And they're like, holy shit, I didn't real, I didn't know that I didn't know that I don't have a sail and I don't have an engine. And now the engine and the sail is the nervous system. You dial that in. Um, I tried to do it for a really long time, top to bottom, like psychologically, um, through supplements, through all this shit. No, it has to go bottom up as, as like the easiest way to do it, I found is bottom up, like through the body through the body, um, you can repattern your nervous system by repatterning your breath and opening up channels inside of there that, I mean, it's, 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 it's almost like magic because it, it, it's all, all the religions fucking spoke about for so long, like breath, 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 breath. Everybody talks about the breath, the breath, the breath, but nobody talks about how it's just like this fucking concept right now. I see these master yogi practitioners that practice breath but practice it like shit because when you practice one thing a lot, 
and you do it wrong, now you're really good at doing it wrong, right? Like you're really good at shooting free throws for your butt cheeks or whatever the fuck they're doing. Second part. Now you have this ship that can move, but the problem is you're, you're dragging, you're dragging, um, you're underwater a little bit. And what I found was, um, because there's a lot of leaks coming in. Now we're inundated with so many toxins. Like there's toxins everywhere. There's toxins in the sky, toxins in the water, toxins in our food, toxins in our house, toxins in our people that we interact with, toxins in our technology. All of these things are toxic, just at different layers. So plugging up the holes is the first uh, part. First of all, like getting clear of like your, your, your fucking labs, getting clear on what those toxins are on a physical level. Um, those are the easiest to find. The emotional, psychological, spiritual toxins are a little bit harder, but also very doable. Um, once you find those, you plug up the holes where they're coming in and you start getting them out. Detox. Detox is fucking crucial. Now the ship is above water. It's on top of the water. Now it can move. It's not dragging. You're not using too much fuel to actually go where you want to go. Third step. Now you can move, but your GPS is fucked up. You don't even know where you're going. Why? Because you have so much, I don't want to even say childhood trauma, but childhood wounds. Yeah. Um, and they, they, they hit all of the energy centers. There's a bunch of them, but the results of those childhood wounds are essentially being lost, um, reactivity, being triggered, uh, not feeling like you're good enough ever, feeling like you're a bad person when you speak your message out into right. the world, not being able to trust yourself. And that, that exemplifies itself in not being able to trust other people or constantly right, attracting people that are untrustworthy because you don't trust yourself. right? Because we're, we're that constant reflection. That's it, bro. Um, not feeling like you, you're a child of God or a child of the universe, like feeling like you're cut off from source, um, not feeling like you're lovable or loving, not feeling like you can take action and be powerful in your own skin, like really stand your ground, um, not feeling like you're worthy or deserving of, of abundance, of love, of passion, of of whatever it is that the universe wants to give you, but your fucking door is closed. Yeah. And the biggest one, the first one is not feeling like you're safe, not feeling like everything's okay. And that, that, that exemplifies itself very clearly in people's lives. Like they don't feel like they belong. They don't feel like they have a home. They don't have a tribe. They don't feel, they don't feel safe. Their nervous system is constantly like their ears are perked up. They're prey. Right. That, that's right. what it is. They're prey. And, yeah. um, and, and, and they haven't forgiven the things that need forgiving. And they haven't zoomed out and seen the blessings that the universe has given them in terms of these traumas, traumas, or possibly the arrows being pulled back that feels like shit. But the further you pull it back, the further you can get shot out. And then through those steps, um, doing a lot of like somatic work, like I, I'm very physical, so... I have like a lot of layers that I layered into this approach on like, um, not just breath, everything I see is breath, right? Like I have teachers that look at everything as movement, but for me, breath comes before movement. So I, I layer everything on like, okay, breath in different, uh, categories and in different patterns and with another partner. Um, yeah. And then it's pick your own adventure, right? Martial arts, sex performance, business, like anything, like once those, those foundational elements are in place. And that's what I'm writing in my next book. I'm like 80,000 words in right now, by the way. Nice. Um, but like once those elements are in place and dialed in, um, you can pick your own adventure. You can fuck like a God. You can fight like a God. You can go and like do the things that God intended for you to do in this life as a man, as a woman, as a human as a cat, whatever the fuck you resonate with. Bro, you're amazing, man. You said so much amazing stuff right there. I don't even know where to even like respond. I mean, I beautiful. I mean, yeah, man. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, I, you know, I like it. I, 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 all we can do is basic, but you know, go to, you know, back it all back to the center. And the center is we are not these physical bodies. The center is we are divine source energy we are literally vibrating molecules or fermions and oscillating waves of energy 
And like you said, man, energy is infinite, you know, ever expanding. It cannot die. It cannot be contracted. You are as a energy sold spiritual being infinite. You are an eternal being. So it's like when you get to that level of awareness, you will not be sitting there worried about dying or worried about so-and-so not loving you enough or worried about so-and-so said something about you on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you get to a place of peace. Now, granted, we do have egos. You know, that <laughs> ego is our reptilian consciousness. And let's not suppress the ego. We know the ego keeps us alive. The ego has a huge role to play. You know, what's his name? Uh, Ryan Holiday says ego is the enemy. No, it's fucking not. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. But at the end of the day, we do have to learn to harness our ego. And we need to, you know, like I say, kind of come from the heart center, which I know both of us do. I mean, this is kind of like the, you know, important part of your teaching is like when you get balanced and you get centered and you have that cosmic awareness, then you can truly open your heart and you can work from that space. Like you said, the breath. I love that. But so many people, bro, have no concept of any of this stuff. And it's like they're fixated and worrying about literally nothing. Yeah. They're worried about stuff before it even happens, which means that when it does happen, they're so depleted that they can't do shit. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. You know, I'm reading this. I think I told you this. I'm reading this profound book, which I maybe one of the most profound books I've ever read in my life. It's called light medicine for someone like you. I'll send it to you. I highly recommend you read it. It's a new paradigm, the science of light spirit and longevity. It's amazing. It's for people like me and you. It's absolutely profound, but the truth is, is that we are, as you already said, the creator of our reality. We are the I am consciousness. As the I am consciousness, you are the observer. And the observer creates what is observed. You have the ability, as you said, to fuck like a god, to fight like a god, to be the world's top CEO, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever floats your boat. But you got to get to a place of where you're doing it in service to the many and not in service to self. And that's the separator, bro. I mean, you know, and I know that we don't even work with these people anymore at where we're at in our life now. But the majority of people who are very, quote unquote, defined as successful are in service to self. And so I don't give a shit what you're doing if you're not doing it for the benefit of all of us or the many or creation, whatever you want to call it. It's like, it's mind blowing to see so many people not get this. You know, people say to me, bro, they, this is what they say to me now. Like I'll get these emails. They're like, bro, I love your content. I watch your podcast. How do I raise my vibration? And I always like, and I thought obviously long and hard about this and no, I don't have a course or a book on it or anything. I've got, you know, eBooks about it, but like, it's simple. Whatever the fuck it is that you do every day. I don't give a shit if you're a CEO or a janitor or you're Jay or you're Rome. You do it at your highest and best fucking capacity. For sure. And you do it in the service to everyone that's alive, sentient, and fucking breathing. It's literally that simple. Who gives a shit? If you do that every single day, and I know you're not going to have good days, you're going to have bad days, whatever, how you define them is just how you define them. But if you do that and you put in that honest effort and work every day, and you're in the creation force, right? You're writing a book. You got 80,000 words. That is divine creation, energy, flow. If you do that every day, the dark side, the zombots, the NPCs, the bots, whatever it is that's the negative element here in the third dimension, they have no sway over you because you're vibrating here and they vibrate here. And that's what people don't understand. It's like, no, dude, you're not going to get attacked by, you know, insert negative energy field or force if you're vibrating here it's universal law you can't even mix these energy fields for sure you're either here or you're there you can't be in both places and that's what people don't understand bro yeah i mean for sure it's it's all about raising the vibrations that's essentially like what i was just talking about right it's just like all of those things are vibrations like toxins in your body 
totally. it, like have vibrational like elements to them that are they're literally heavy. Yes. Heavy metals, right? Parasites. Like it's it's all very heavy. So yeah, I totally agree. Well, it's like you said, the cities are <laughs> cancer cells. Yeah. If you like you said, pull out and we look at them, they are gigantic, magnetized, polarized, electromagnetic frequency distortions. Total yeah. incoherent energy, total dissonant energy waves. <laughs> and if you're in those fields, even if you're like me and you, bro, guess what? It's called resonance or dissonance. And when you're around a lot of dissonance, you resonate in the dissonance. And so people 100%. don't understand this kind of shit. It's like, hello, what is my message? Jay, what are you saying? You lost me. You and Rome were over my head. I'm saying, motherfucker, if you live in New York City or LA, leave. And now. leave as soon as fucking possible. 100%. I was just in Miami last week and I was working with a client and he was just like, it was just very like low, low energy. And I was like, bro, you just got to get out to like where I live and stay with me for 90 days. And like, and he's like, well, but what if I don't like nature? And I was like, you haven't spent enough time in nature. Who and the doesn't thing is, like nature? Well, they get addicted to the low frequency and right. also the fear, right. right? The fear of That's the unknown. Totally right. Nature is unknown. We got grizzly bears out here, bro. We got totally wolves, right. grizzly bears, mountain lions, this this is definitely not a walk in the park, but like they got homeless people that are fucking trying to eat your face in Miami and fucking New York, bro. Like you're, you're just like one fucking uh, meth or like angel dust fucking uh, trip away from getting your face eaten. So it's just like, like what, what, what would you rather have? Like 80% probably survival living out here, learning how to integrate with that like Schumann resonance, like out here in fucking nature. Bro, I no see it right now behind you. I see the Schumann resonance behind you. Look at that energy field. That is literally divinity. <laughs> yeah. I've been looking for this place my whole life. Exactly. And once you found it, you knew that it was there. And guys, by the way, this guy's from fucking Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> Yeah, 39,000 like, 39, people per square mile in Brooklyn, where I live five. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and you, as a soul, again, incarnated into Rome's awe to get back to where you are now. And that's, you know, another part of the process is like going with the flow, not resisting the things that happen to you to get you to where you are. You, you, you know, we both have similar backgrounds. You know, we've had like many dark nights of the soul. But the dark nights of the soul have to happen for you to get to where you are. And by the way, I'll just break it out right now. I'm following in his footsteps. My wife and I are selling everything. Yes, you heard that right. We're moving to Mexico. We are leaving the USA Inc. And we are selling everything that we own and literally living in a furnished apartment a half a block from the beach in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. So... I don't know if you're listening to this podcast where you have to go, but listen to your soul, listen to your higher self. It will connect with you and tell you where you must go at this time. I mean, I've had so many conversations, bro, since you and I met. And again, I know it's not a coincidence. There's total synchronicities of people saying, oh yeah, when you feel that knowing, when you get that calling, it's time to lighten the load. And dude, dude tell people about your car. I mean, like, you you literally travel all over the West Coast now and literally camp in a teepee on the top of your car. Yeah. So about a year, uh, a year and a half ago, um, I was living in Vegas and I was seeing a lot of people. Like when COVID hit, I opened up my doors and I was seeing I saw almost 3000 people in the last couple of years. Uh, like live workshops, like one-on-one -on -one type shit. And I have a lot of data for it. And that's why I started writing this book. Cause I was like, I have a shitload of data. Like I have a lot more data than fucking Pfizer had when they released their shit. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, I, I was like, fuck, I hate staying at Airbnbs. They like try to make me do stuff all the time. I fucking hate like having them like, they're like, Oh, take out the trash, do this, do that. It's like, dude, I'm paying a fucking premium. I'm sure you can fucking clean up a little bit after me. Right. Um, and then I don't like staying in hotels. I just don't like all the toxins in there too. So oh. last year I bought a truck. Uh, I bought a pickup and I hooked it up with like a rooftop tent, a 70 uh, liter free fridge and freezer, solar battery. Amazing. Um, 
I filled it up with like all my books. Well, a lot of my books, I stored a bunch, but like the ones that I was reading, like a hundred of them, I'm fucking traveling around. And, um, I just started like tra- my guns, ammo, you know, like all, all the, all the necessities. And then I would just travel around and do like workshops. I would work with clients and then, um, and then I, I, Geary hit me up and he's like, Hey, you want to come to a mastermind? I came and I wound up staying at Geary's for like four months and I That's would just awesome, like use man. that as home base. Yeah. Um, and then go and like teach in like Idaho or Montana or wherever. Um, yeah, I have like a fucking four person, um, uh, like a phone memory phone mattress up top. Like I got all my, no, stuff it's in. amazing, man. I mean, I mean, like I said, man, like you motivated me significantly <laughs> you know, when I was there that like, this is very possible. And I mean, I mean, look, we both have had all the toys in the matrix, bro. I mean, you, you know, you're 14 young, years younger than me, but your soul is probably even more ancient than mine. If there's anybody I've ever met that has a more ancient soul than me, it's probably you. And I'm sure we've been on many battlefields together, but like, you know, I look at this as like the calling right now in the matrix is for the people in resonance to lighten the load. There is no purpose to have stuff. It's fucking meaningless. The only meaning any of it has is what you ascribe as value to it. Now I'm with you, bro. That's my biggest thing. I haven't said this to anybody. It's like my books. What do I do with my books? And bro, honestly, I'm just like you. I literally am not, I'm not even bringing a hundred. I am literally in the next month because we are out of this house on November 15th. So I have literally 30 days or not even 26 days. And a lot of it, I'm going to be gone because we're traveling. Uh, I have to mark the 50 books I'm taking with me. And that's fucking hard. There's more than 2,200 books that I have read and cataloged and highlighted all paperback in this house. Right. And it's like, I have all these people are like, Oh my God, will you give me your books? I'm like, I'm not giving you my books, motherfucker. They're going into storage somewhere. For sure. <laughs> I might give somebody like you some of the books. Right. But like, I, it, it, that's, that's the only thing that matters to me is the wisdom, the knowledge. And I know that book learning isn't everything, you know, before people reach out, but it's like, that is all I care about, bro. Because like, to me, that information has allowed me to just, you know, stair step and become more conscious and become more aware and become more loving and more surrendered and all these things. It's like, so that's the only thing that matters. But bro, I look at all these people that you and I know and they're fucking older than me, bro. And they're still talking about their second and their third home. And I'm going to get a yacht. I'm going to buy a plane. Yeah. And then I just think like, what the fuck? Like, at what point do you realize that none of that shit matters? And honestly, and I know you know this, and I want you to talk about this. It's actually the decoupling that cr- creates the space <laughs> for you to become even more creative, even more divine, even have more wisdom. And none of those people, until they figure that out, are ever going to get there, bro. They're just going to keep <laughs> accumulating bullshit. Hundred percent. I tell people like when you're done buying cars and planes and yachts, then you can fucking call me. That's right. Because like then you'll understand. Like when you've run out of stuff to buy, <laughs> then you'll understand that like you can't buy what it is that's like that's being sold to you. Exactly. You you have to, as a soul. You have to get to a place where you understand enough and truly enough. And granted, look, I know we're living in the third dimension. We all want our kids to have a good life. We all want to be able to eat when we need to eat. We all want to be able to train when we want to train. We all want to be able to fly to cool destinations to, you know, connect with other resonating like minds, right? And so those are basic, you know, I wouldn't call them necessities, but those are basic wants. But beyond that, what do you truly really need beyond that? You don't need any of it. It's all insane. And again, the matrix, the social media, the narrative, it just keeps pushing that you need this and you need that. And bro, honestly, like when I get lost nowadays, I'll be very honest and very truthful and transparent and authentic with you. Like I always am. Like it's about like my vendors and my contractors. And it's like, who do I really need? And then I like, my heart says, well, like, I don't want to fuck up them and not pay them for their families. But it's also kind of like, do I really, are they really like, you know, helping me enough that it's like, you know, getting to that place. And so like, we all deal with this. We all battle the matrix. But yeah. you do, you really do have to get to a place where mentally there is nothing to worry about other than your basic rent, 
your basic utilities, your food, and your books, and maybe an internet connection to be able to get on the internet and me and you to have this profound conversation, right? Like what beyond that do you really need? No, I mean, decoupling is like stuff, right? People, beliefs, um, locations, right? Like those things are huge because like those are things that like we're all addicted to in some way, shape or form because we get some sort of like self-worth for having this like belonging or because like now we belong to those things as opposed to those things belong to us, right? Um, And it's just like, it's so... I mean, it's like, I don't know if you've ever read Marie, Marie Kondo's The Art of Tidying Up, I think. And I it's like, I'm familiar with it, but I haven't read it. But it, it's just like, she, she talks about like how stuff has energy, right? Like oh, your stuff absolutely. has energy. Absolutely. And she communicates with the stuff. And like, if your stuff has energy, well, then what kind of energy is your stuff giving off? Like, is it stagnant energy? Is it right. negative energy? Is it positive energy, right? Like I, yes. I have some stuff that I, I love. I love my mason jars. Yep. Um, yeah, of course. I love like certain things because like they, they add to the experience of my life, but something that I do with my children, right? Well, my kids stay with me, my kids stay with me for like really long periods of time and they eat like I do, right? Like I eat a very specific type of diet, but in the evening we all eat a snack. Like after dinner, we'll eat a snack and we'll eat like, like a really nice, like gluten-free brownie or like a gluten-free, like paleo waffle with some ice cream and it's like one scoop of ice cream, one waffle. Right. And the reason for that is like, there's nothing wrong with dessert. What's wrong is that you don't know when to fucking stop. What me? Yeah. Yeah. Like people like people like the the problem, the the big problem is like people are fucking liars. They're filthy liars, not just to other people, but to themselves. Like how often do you say, I'm going to fucking, not you, but how often do you say, I'm going to eat one cookie and then the whole fucking box is gone? But like, exactly, what, dude. what discipline is, like what that exactly. warrior spirit is, is like, I'm going to eat one cookie and you fucking eat one cookie. Like that's where like that start begins. It starts with one cookie. And like that, that's where the magic starts to happen because you start to gain um, confidence in your abilities, in your promises to yourself. And through that, you gain respect. And through that, you gain self-trust and like, all, and it seems, it seems almost inconsequential, whether it's a box of cookies or one cookie, but multiply that by 50 years, 60 years of lying to yourself that you're going to eat one fucking cookie, or you're going to scroll for 10 minutes, or you're going to fucking, you're going to, you're going to watch one porno movie. Yeah. Right. It's all or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And like. And not everybody subscribes to that. People are like, oh, Rome, you're so extreme. Great. Let's see where you're like. It's not extreme, though. It's fucking discipline, bro. (laughs) It's discipline. It's a simple thing. It's discipline. People don't have (laughs) discipline. You know, I think of that military movie. You lack discipline, son. 100%. People do not have respect for themselves. When you don't respect and it goes back to what you already said and what I always say, which is love and trust of self. The biggest issue that human human beings have, and again, as you said, somewhere there's developmental disablement, call them childhood traumas, call them whatever the fuck you want. You know, people get mad now because so many people are using the word trauma. Who gives a shit what you call it? It's a developmental disablement. It happens in your early years. It probably happened a hundred fucking times in a hundred different lives at the same fucking time. And you're too fucking stupid to actually overcome it. And you're just repeating a fucking vicious feedback loop. Right. But at the end of the day, it's lack of love and trust of self. It's, it's a concern for what people are typing about you on the internet. And all this stuff is literally because you don't love and trust yourself. When you love and trust yourself, you don't give a fizzle. It's literally, it's that simple. And you will live to create and to serve and to do whatever. And e- even if you're not, you know, maybe you're just a, a fucking, you know, uh, a, a monk in a, in a monastery at 18,000 feet in the Andes. And all you do is pray and meditate for fucking 12 to 14 hours a day. That's cool too. Right. Yeah. I, I was very blessed with my parents, you know, like my dad, my dad was a wrestler, so he was very disciplined. And then he worked construction in New York City. He was a sheet metal worker. And 
He used to wake up at 4 a.m. He used to get on the fucking train with all those homeless dudes fucking like shaking out their fucking dirty shit on the train and like people like fucking cursing and fighting. And he used to like take a nap for half an hour and go work for like 10 hours on a fucking construction site. And who works on construction sites? Criminals? Right. Uh, former athletes yep. and Russian dudes. <laughs> <laughs> And like, like, cause the Russian dudes, like they, they might be engineers from where they're from. They, they just don't speak fucking English, but they right, know how exactly. to build stuff. Exactly. And then he would fucking come home. He would take the train again, rush hour, come home. And the first thing that he would do is he would go fucking lift weights every day. That's he awesome. wouldn't say anything to anybody. He'd go fucking lift weights. Then he'd go take a hot bath. He'd pay the bills, whatever bills came in, he would eat. And only then. Like it was an unwritten rule that we would talk to him at that point. And I learned discipline, you know, like through like seeing my father. And that's, that's another problem that we have in today's world. Like there's no not fathers. A lot of fathers, no and fathers. The fathers that are there. They're fucking pussies. Yeah. They've been disabled. The, the child and family court system in the West has literally taken the man out of the nuclear family, <laughs> pushed the woman into the workforce, told her that she was the man. Now, you know, you're equal to the man and you can do the same roles and functions. And we all know it was a scam. You know, the book uh, Shadow Men by Anthony Napoleon said, nope, it was actually designed to get another tax paying citizen into the fucking corporation. Right. So it's like they destroyed the family. They neutered the masculine. They neutered the man. And you're right, dude. Most kids now grow up without a dad. And they have a mom trying to play dad. And that's not a mom's role. Just like it's not a dad's role to be a fucking mom. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not, you know, but like this gives us an opportunity to play, to play like both roles and yep. to balance our feminine and masculine. Like yep. on one end, I work with so many men right but on the other end i work with tons of single moms yep. that are fucking struggling that have been abused by court systems oh, that yeah. that that need the work because it's just like they first of all the women are better at being masculine than most of the oh, men nowadays. absolutely absolutely it's, it's insane it's insane like because they're smart they have empathy like they're fucking strong and 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 they have and i tell people this all the time i'm like there's two fuck two of the most powerful people in the world and they're like who are the most powerful people in the world? And I was like, crackheads? Because a crackhead will get you a fucking bumper to a 1998 Buick Regal at three o'clock in the morning in New York City for a fucking 20 bag. And single moms, because they have everything riding on it. And it's just like, if men could fall into that third fucking category, that would be great. But like right now, oh my goodness. It's so sad to see the degeneration and the okay. desolation of men um, it's, it's incredible. It's mind blowing. I mean, it's mind blowing and it's, it's over. As you said, the game, the war is over. You know, we talk about this. It's, it, it, there's no coming back. I mean, I mean, there are plenty of us out there who are living optimized, you know, who are doing whatever is necessary, living in the wild, you know, using therapeutic testosterone, whatever it is you got to do to optimize, you know, but we are a very small contingent of humankind right now 100%. and you know i will argue bro that you know we're going to be the last man standing however that it. is i love it because then i could just reproduce all with with all of them with all of the most beautiful incredible women i will have in my stable that i'll reproduce with bro <laughs> you will have a harem of a thousand chicks man i can, bro i can't even manage one i mean I, <laughs> how, how the fuck am i gonna have five or ten you know i mean who knows what the future has in store Bro, this has been profound. Like if somebody wants to speak with you, work with you, connect with you, coach with you, like what is the best way for them to do that? Um, they can reach me right now. I'm getting like all my like marketing stuff built, um, but they can reach me on Instagram. That's the easiest way. If they have Facebook, they can find me on Facebook, Rome Za. Um, yeah, they could just like reach out to me. Um, we'll have a conversation, see if they're a good fit. Uh, right now I'm working on launching a group coaching program that's awesome. more uh in line with like not billionaires um yeah like that that's probably the easiest way and then from that conversation they start doing the work maybe they come to a retreat uh and if they're a good fit and they can afford it they would do private coaching if i had space i don't even have space for that right now that's why i'm launching the group coaching program of course do you, do you have a, um, do you have a uh, mastermind or retreat set up like anytime in the near future? Yeah, I have. I, 
well, I just booked out a retreat in November. So possibly like December or January. I kind of like book them like off the seat of my fucking uh, like off, off the edge of the seat. Mostly. I don't, I don't, yeah. even, I don't like people telling me what to do. I don't even like me telling me what to do. Sure. sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you, dude. Like, uh, you know, I just want, I just asked because like, if you had one, you know, I could like post or whatever, you know, for it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, people can reach out to you through Instagram and connect with that way. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I did, I've told a lot of people about you so far and stuff like that. So, you know, hopefully, you know, some people will come to you. I mean, obviously for sure, once they watch this podcast, uh, I don't even know when this podcast is going to run because as you know, I'm going into chaos for the next two months, but it's going to be epic. I, I'm hopeful that I'll probably run this at some time in December and if not December, like early January, I actually want to have all my really amazing podcasts like launch in early January and February, because that's when I'm going to be like, you know, in my uh, creation mode for sure. Cause as you know, from entropy comes creation. And obviously, like I said, like this is the best time of my life. I mean, I, my wife and I, I'll just share with you with this last night, we literally went through our house and we labeled <coughs> selling, donating, keeping. And the keeping list is this far. I should show you the list. Look, look at this. Hold on. So this is, selling and it's like by off you know it's by rooms like you know jay's office bat gabby's bedroom alex's bedroom upstairs hallway master bedroom and then we've got like living room entertainment dining room zen den kitchen backyard front yard and then how about this keeping list pictures Book. i love it that's it i love it i went to bed last night more clear then I've gone to bed in a long time. And I know I shared this with you and also in the group. Um, the matrix tries to suck you back in, bro. Yeah. I mean, I've had all these weird like feelings that have just come out of nowhere about like, well, what about this? What about that? What about your car? Do you really want to give up your car? I mean, it's, it fucks with you. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you're like, yes. You know, I mean, it's like, I'm talking to myself, my higher self, maybe, or maybe my, just my you know, reptilian consciousness fighting. It's a conflict, but it's like, no. And so last night was like the first night of like, you know what? Oh my God, I feel so good. There's absolutely nothing to think about. I am decoupling. That's what I'm taking. Literally some pictures that Monica wants and our books. And that's it. And of course our clothes that we're keeping. And I'm getting rid of at least 50% of my clothes. You know what I mean? I don't need fucking dress clothes in Mexico. For sure. Right? So it's going away. Yeah. But and yeah, if dude, you do need them, you can go get fucking custom tailored stuff that exactly. you'll have one fucking great suit. And that's it. Like, who fucking cares? Bro, I, I don't literally need anything, as you know. I mean, I mean, but you know, we we the word need is such a low conscious word. I mean, like, we literally choose to be what we want to be, and then we be it. We don't, 100%. Need, we don't need anything. We're so brainwashed. And again, look, I get it. I've, you know, played the matrix money materialism game. If we call it that, you know, I've been in the Babylonian money magic system for fucking 25 years, but I don't care about it anymore. I have enough to live well and I can make as much or as many, as more as I need or want to, you know, again, I just use the word need, but, you know, choose whenever I want to. So this is yeah. my choice. And again, my wife right now is definitely with me and we are decoupling from the matrix and it's the most freeing feeling I've ever had, man. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge to get to the point where like you, so it's a duality, right? Like it's an interesting duality where it's just like, I'm detached. Like I don't need anything. Like if everything burns down tomorrow, I'm good because I have everything that I need inside exactly. of me. And on the other exactly. end, the stuff that I have, I love it for the time that I have it. And when it's time to give it up, I'm willing to give it up because in war, right? Like my, fa I, I had family in the Holocaust and then we had family here, like during like the Chechen war, during the fall of the Soviet Union. And the people that died were the people that couldn't let go of their stuff. Yes. Yes. Always. They just, they, they knew it was time to leave, but they couldn't leave because they couldn't leave their home. They couldn't leave their friends. They couldn't leave their stuff. And you know what? Like my parents left with their bare asses. We had That's no right. money when we came to the United States yep. and who cares? But they had desire and work ethic and that's all that mattered. And, you know, it's funny you say that when well, the show on this, like, what about, cause we don't, nobody talks about this, but those people that died because they can't get rid of this material shit that's worthless, you know, bro, you could probably make an argument that those are people that also struggle to get to the next level in the soul realm because they're literally stuck 
holding on to shit that means nothing. Heavy. Are they, yeah, exactly. Are they literally even crossing over into, you know, call it the spirit realm, call it the, you know, the middle, whatever you want to call it, where you get the life review or the soul review, or are they like disincarnated spirits still hanging around in the earth field because they are so fucking confused because they don't want to leave their son or their daughter or their car or their fucking pictures in their fucking basement. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to walk up the stairs when you're carrying a few thousand pounds, you know? Man, amazing, bro. I truly appreciate you coming on the show. So all of you guys and gals that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, of course, support uh, the amazing individuals that come on like Rome. Go to his Instagram page or his Facebook page. It's Rome Za. <laughs> and remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We'll see all of you guys very soon.